So Marty, it is an absolute honor to have you on the show. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Um, and uh, you don't look like the typical guitar interviewer, which is a very nice change of pace. <laughs> okay, well, that's good, I think. So, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, good. Uh, so where are you? You're in um, Tokyo, is that right? That's right, yeah. I am so jealous. Um, I've never, I travel a lot and I've never actually been to um, Japan, but it's on, it's like the top of my list of places to go. Um, oh, well, as soon as it's safe, come on over. Yeah, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Yeah, I'm sure I will. Like, I, you know, yes, that's one of the things I want to do. Um, so I like to ask everyone this when they come on the show just to get us started. Um, so why guitar for you? I just thought it was the coolest one of all. I just wanted to play rock music, you know, and um, I thought it was the, the most accessible of the instruments um, and probably the easiest to pick up. And, um, you know, it's not like a drum set where you got to lug things around and you have to be a architect to figure out how to bolt things together and screw things together and, that was never my forte, so it just guitar looked like the obvious choice of all the band instruments. And, and so how old were you when you started? I was about uh, 13, maybe 14, somewhere in there. Okay, that seems to be the sort of sweet spot, doesn't it, I guess? Because it's the, it's the age where you can become quite obsessive and, and just, like, focus. It can become your life at that age, I guess. Well, I think that's the age where you make uh, big changes. You know what I mean? Um, you sort of become an adult, but you're still a kid. And uh, all, all of the good things, you're finally about to experience all the good things in life. And the things that happen are kind of magnified at that age. So when you see your first couple of concerts, it's just like, oh, my God, yeah. it's just so impressive. And you kind of make rash decisions, decisions, you know, and as soon as you see that first concert, at least in my case, I'm like the very next day, I'm like, that's what I'm doing. Forget everything that I had planned before this, which was nothing much, but forget everything. I'm doing that. I'm doing what those guys are doing. So what was that concert? It was Kiss. Ah, OK. I interviewed um, Paul Stanley yesterday. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so what was it about Kiss that kind of really resonated with you? Well, at that time, I was really, really into sports. Um, any kind of sports, American football, baseball, basketball, hockey. Um, I played it, and of course, I sucked really bad. I didn't suck as bad as I looked like I sucked, though. I, I will give myself a little bit of pride. I looked like I was really, really going to be bad, but it was actually like kind of decent considering that I was like this, this skinny, scrawny little kid, short, nothing, nothing athletic, but I wasn't horrible. Okay. Um, but there was no way I was going to ever make anything out of myself in sports as much as I loved it. I, I was like the guy who knew all the stats, you know, of all the other players, you know, and, um, so, you know, what are you going to do? Collect baseball, baseball cards forever. And uh, so I just liked athletic stuff, you know, running around, jumping around. When I saw Kiss, it's like these guys are doing sports, but with music and loud bombs going off and loud music and guitars and jumping around and people are going crazy and like pretty girls everywhere. And just everybody's having fun and like, what an amazing thing for a 13 year old to see. And I'm like, this is as close as I'm going to get to doing any kind of sports. And I think I can do what those guys are doing. Yeah. You know, I, I can't do what the football players are doing because I get killed. But I saw what Kiss was doing. And I'm like, that doesn't look like too far of a stretch from what I could probably do. OK. And, and so was it like literally you went then went home, bought a guitar and, and then dedicated the rest of your childhood to it? And the next day, uh, I got a guitar right away and um, started playing in bands right away, even though I could barely play. Um, I, you know, I started a band and we played a next door neighbor's party and 
and um, made up our little set list and learned a bunch of songs and basically did what you have to do in any band. Even though we we're just little kids, we could barely play, but it's the same process. Yeah. So I was very lucky that I got into that process at the very beginning. It wasn't a lot of practicing in my bedroom and, okay, now I'm good enough to play. It was like, no, I don't care. I have a guitar. It makes a sound. Let's start a band and let's go. So that I was very lucky, lucky to start off that way because I didn't have any like preconceived notion of how good you needed to be. A lot of people get shy, you know what I mean? They think, oh, I'm not good enough to be in a band. I'm not, oh, I'm not ready yet, you know, and you don't really have to be all that ready, you know, to do little things, you know, to play in front of your friends or play in front of your family or mm-hmm. all that. So uh, I was lucky to get a good start early. Yeah, it's funny that because before I, when I was a kid, I learned how to play the saxophone and um, I was exactly like that. I wouldn't play in front of anyone. I literally played in my bedroom, learning like classically trained. I didn't, I only got up to like grade three or four or something. Um, But yeah, I just couldn't get out of the bedroom. And then that was kind of it for me after, you know, when I got a bit older and and was doing other things, I just dropped it. But um, I've decided with the guitar, I want to try and just get out. And just play it. Like you say, it's kind of, and I guess it's because you were into punk rock and that is a punk rock attitude, isn't it? It's like, right, I can do two chords, screw it. I'm out there and I can do it. Exactly. Uh, What was it about guitar that made you say, I want to do guitar? I've always loved guitar. Like I love classic rock. And um, for me, it's always been the guitar. It's just always shone. And I've always been attracted to it and just the sound of it. And, and so, and I just even love the look of it. Like, I think guitars look beautiful. They, they're what, you know, they're a work of art. You could hang them on the wall. And even if you didn't play, you know, you can, I just love it. So, um, so yeah, so I guess that was it. It's always been kind of a secret little thing that I've wanted to do. Um, I have a lot of friends that are guitarists. So I think it was always, de- I was always destined to go down that path. Um, oh. But yeah, so now I'm here. <laughs> now I've got to try and make it's it. It's an inspiring, inspiring story. I mean, I love it. I love it to see when people um, have that kind of uh, excitement about something like that. You know what I mean? And then you wind up doing it, you know? Yeah. And I think I, I'm like you, how you know, how you say you were um, with sports, like trying to know all the details of all the players and everything like that. I've been like that. So I've been reading lots of book about the history of Leo Fender and, and Les Paul. And so, yeah, I'm a nerd. So <laughs> that's funny because I was exactly that way with sports. But then when it came to guitar and music, that went completely out the window. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about the history of guitar. I don't know the names of the parts of the instrument. I can barely change strings. Actually, my tech just taught me how to change strings on a lock guitar. I've been playing guitar a few years. I don't know. I don't know a lot of that stuff. When it came to sports, I was that exact nerd. I loved it. But he's got a 270 average. Last year, he pitched three no hitters and all this kind of stuff. I was all into that. But with guitar, it just I just got into making music and all of that other stuff just kind of, I left that to the other people and who are so much more knowledgeable than I am. But, you know, everybody's got a little bit of that nerd in them somewhere, you know? Yeah. I think we're all glad that you didn't go down that route and that you just focused on the playing because you create beautiful music. So that's what, that's what it's about, isn't it? Really? Well, um, I think so. And it's funny because, you know, I've always enjoyed your music, um, but I've never really looked at how you play because I've just been listening to it. So since I've been on this journey, I've been watching your hands and stuff like that. And I've been doing it with a lot of guitarists. And one thing that I just instantly record, like just it just shone out to me when you were playing was the way you pick. It's I've never seen anything like it. It's fantastic. How, how was this, is this because you're self-taught and you never had lessons? Because my guitar teacher is always telling me to like, have your thumb up here. Don't have it too low. Have your hand, you know, this way and that. I mean, how, how did you develop this, this, this style of picking? 
I really have no idea. Um, it's like I hold my hand upside down or something, and I don't really know the origin of it. There's no real um, reason behind it. It just happened. I saw this ancient video of when I was in high school, and I was doing it then, so nobody told me to do it. I don't think it looks particularly cool. If there's a photo of me, I'll crop it just above that hand. If I had to come up with an answer, um, a real answer, of course, I can make jokes about it. But the real, real answer, I think, is the fact that I don't like the sound of muted notes. Uh, okay. Even I'm thinking in Japanese, the um, subconsciously, I don't like the sound of muted notes. You know, when guitar players play and it sounds like that kind of muted sound? The palm muting. Right, right, right. I don't like that when you're playing melodies and solos. It's okay, like in percussive parts, like rhythms or even a percussive part of a solo, but like to do melodies with that, it's just like you're losing half of the pitch and it just doesn't appeal to me. So... I think subliminally, my hand is far away from the strings to make sure they ring out completely, 100%. So instead of, you hear, da 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 you hear the your note full and rich, and it really projects farther out to the listener and farther out to me. So I that's the only thing I can think of and even that would be a subliminal decision. It wasn't something I thought of that I wanted to do. Okay, that makes sense. But do you find, do you get um, hand, like hand problems at all? No. no. I think every, you know, life or guitarists, guys who are doing it forever, um, have hand issues of one kind or another at some point. But I've never really, really had anything with that Um yeah, you know, I the only hand issues I have is like when I'm playing live, I beat it really, really hard. And sometimes the strings will uh, make lines in my little finger here and blood will just come rushing out of it. And it's real dramatic. And, and that looks kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, that's about it. I've been very lucky as far as you, you would think that doing this all the time would... Uh, yeah. Would not be too healthy, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It's very limber and loose. Then you know why it bleeds because you don't like the palm muting, so you haven't built up your calluses there. Oh, people do uh, calluses on their hands. Their 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 yeah. right hand. Apparently, this is what my guitar teacher tells me because I've been trying to learn how to palm mute now, um, and he's like, "You need to really build up the calluses here." <laughs> I never thought in a million years I'd want like really dry, horrible hands. So it's like my fingers. No, no, no. It's it's not ladylike. I've never heard of that calluses thing before, and uh, I, I do my share of palm muting when I'm playing rhythm. So I've never. Um, and plus, I don't palm mute with my little finger. I right? okay. that's where that's the only place it bleeds. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe your teacher is a super palm muter. That could be. <laughs> that could be it. I love that. I'll tell him you said that. Um, yeah. I, now, I know a term that you're not too happy about is being called a shredder. And, yeah. and, you, and you know what? I get why you don't like it, because I think that you, you know, you helped create that sound. And then it's become, it's morphed into something different, I think, to where you were going with it. Um, but but what do you, I mean, what do you think? Why do you not like that term? I mean, that's what I'm just guessing, but. Yeah, I mean, uh, to me, it just sounds like someone just playing mindlessly fast. Yeah. And um, I think, uh, you know, what you said before about maybe me starting something, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of an illusion, really. And I think, um what I played like in the really early part of my career and even now, sometimes things sound really fast because the choice of notes is so unusual that the notes go by and they make different clicks in your head when, 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 when it's registering in your ears. Does this make sense? If you play like a succession of notes that people are used to hearing, 
you have to really play it fast, like 200 beats per minute for it to sound fast. Like if you just play a scale up and down, it's going to sound fast. But if you do unusual groups of notes and unusual subdivisions of notes and unusual melody note choices, it can be not even that fast at all. And it'll just sound fast because so many things are going by that you're not used to. You're not accustomed to hearing these sequences of notes. So people think that, you know, oh, it's so fast because they try to play it and it's quite difficult. But there's a difference between speed and difficulty for sure. Um, but it's just a big, it's a term that happens with a lot of young guitarists that doesn't exist in the real world. Uh, I think a lot of young guitarists, and myself included, when I was a little kid, they're fascinated with things that they're unable to do. And one thing that, that you're not able to do is play really fast when you're a beginner. Your fingers just don't work that way, and your mind doesn't work that way yet. So when you see a guy across the street in his basement playing really fast, you're like, how come I can't do that? It just becomes this holy grail for one year, two year, three gear guitarists. And those are the people who are active in, you know, net chats and things like that. And mm -hmm. those are the people who like buy guitar magazines and buy lots of gear and stuff. Those are the people that are keeping the industry of guitar alive. And those are the people who are fascinated by quickness of fingers and like just really fast playing. But little do they know playing slow is like a thousand times more difficult than playing fast. It really, really is. Playing slow is where you can separate the men from the boys, so to speak. I don't know where the girls fit in there. Separate the women from the girls. We're um, all the same. <laughs> we're all the same, but like you can really tell when you hear somebody play something slow, you can tell if they're any good right then and there. You can tell when you hear something fast, even like eight year old kids can play really fast and really clean and really accurately. So it's really an illusion, but it's the thing that keeps, you know, guitars selling and it keeps, you know, you got to have something that is like a holy grail for beginner people to get inspired by. So a lot of them get hear this fast stuff and they're like, I want to do that so bad. Okay. Now you've done it. You've practiced for a couple of years. You can, you've done it. Now what? Yeah. So I kind of don't like being lumped into that because there's a lot of people out there who just play really, really fast all the time. And to me, it just sounds like noise. And, and it's just really playing fast was interesting when I just picked up the instrument, but it certainly lost its interest quite quickly after, you know, after you're able to do it. Then when it became interesting and playing interesting things on the instrument, creating interesting music, and it has really nothing to do with speed, whether it be slow, medium, fast, or anything in between, because, um, you know, music is of all tempos. Every tempo is in music, every single tempo. So, um, but again, you know, that term... It's just something I, I don't like to be lumped into. But at the same time, if you love shredding and you think I'm a, shred, a shredder and you love my music, we're bros. I still love you. It's all good. It's all terminology. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is if you like the music or not. So yeah. you can call me anything as long, as long as you like the music. And even if you don't like the music, you know, it is what it is. I, I think you're right. I think like, you know, you, in a way, if you want to be a great guitarist, you need to say everything you want to say just with that one note. And then you are, like, you separate the, the men from the boys type thing. You know, I think that was B.B. King, wasn't it? He was, he, 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 um, was like, it was like an economy of notes. He didn't play too much. He just said what he needed to say with a few. I think anyone, anyone who's like, uh, you know, been around for a long time making music, uh, should be able to do that quite easily, you know, because it's like a singer. You have one word to sing, you sing that one word and it's beautiful. Yeah. And same thing goes with any instrument, not just guitar. So I think any 
halfway decent, reasonable professional guitarist or any instrument can make one note sing quite easily. It's really not uh, the big holy grail. It should be, it should go without saying. Yeah. So those records that you did um, with Cacophony, what, um, when you look back at those records and, and the sound that you created on those, what do you think of them now? Um, I really haven't listened to them in a long, long time. Uh, I think what it is, um, is there's a lot of really good stuff on there. I'm still proud of it. Um, I like a lot of it. Um, a lot of it could have been way better. Um, but, um, what are you going to do? We were just happy to be there. And, um, some of that stuff would still, I would still find it in my radar now and enjoy it. Um, but a lot of it probably just seems like a growing version of myself, you know, no regrets. Um, but it's just stuff that has all been developed and come better since then. I'm sure. Yeah. And, and, and are you still in touch with Jason? Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, he's in my most recent music video. Oh, is so, he? Um, yes. Yes. Um, it's the song's called Makinaide. Uh, definitely check it out. He does a little cameo in there. And um, yeah, he's my idol. He's my inspiration. Oh, that's lovely. Because he is still playing, isn't he? I mean, he or is he not anymore? I know, I know he can't play, but he was creating music through a computer, wasn't he? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, um, he still is. And he just uh, recently released just a fantastic album called Triumphant Hearts. Mm -hmm. And um, I played on it. And pretty much any guitar player under the sun has played on that record. There's this one song, there's like 30 guys. Um, probably a lot of them have been to your channel um, playing on this one song. So definitely go and check it out after, after yeah. you're finished with this. I will, I will, definitely. And that song that you mentioned, that's off um, Tokyo Jukebox 3. Yes. Um, there's, there's a part, and you can tell me this, there's a part in there that sounds, is that, you, I think you get the guitar to kind of sound like a piano. I mean, I know you've got piano in it, but you are, it's really interesting because you're getting these, these interesting sounds out of the guitar. Am, am I am I completely mishearing that? I know what part you're talking about too. That is me doubling a piano. There's oh, okay. me and playing a, an actual piano part. Um, and so somebody played the piano part, yeah. And uh, I played the guitar part, and we're playing in complete unison. Okay. And um, that's something I also did on the. I've done it on a couple of my albums before. It's just a very unique coupling of instruments. Um, especially for unison lines, if you play the same line on guitar as piano, it's going to really have um, thinking in Japanese again. Um, pers persistent. Um, it really. I'm so forgetting English. It's just not even funny. It um, when you play a guitar line along with a piano line, yeah. it um, kind of forces its way into your ear more than just a piano line or just a guitar line. Oh, because, okay. Yeah, because it's like a unison. So the melody is the same melody that you're trying to get people to hear, but it's just got different frequencies in it than just a guitar, or just a piano. So uh, I've done it a couple times on my records and it, it really brings out a certain thing. Yeah, I would I, recommend trying it. Yeah, I thought that's what I heard. And I was like, oh, this sounds really interesting. So are you one of those mu musicians that you'll hear a sound, whether it be in a street or someone doing, you know, I don't know, so cutting something, and you'll be like, oh, how can I recreate that on my guitar? Uh, all the time. Not necessarily the sound, but um, um, often you'll hear unique rhythms in day-to-day -day life. You know, and if you walk by a train station, you'll hear a unique rhythm and you'll just hear you unique random things that, uh, like you said, these spark you into an idea. And, you know, this Tokyo Jukebox 3 is my like 14th album or so. So my mind is constantly set on trying to think of new things to do. So when something pops in there, I even subliminally take note of it. 
It's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, how do you feel like thinking how long your career has been and the fact that you've you've made, yeah, a, a, the longevity that you've had as a guitarist, essentially being um, like an instrumental instrumentalist as well, which is quite unheard of, isn't it? Yeah, you know, um, I, I try not to think back of, about anything and pat myself on the back. I'm always into whatever's next and i'm sure whatever's next is going to be better than the last thing uh, or else i wouldn't bother doing it um but yeah to hear it from you is very nice <laughs> you should take a moment <laughs> to appreciate it and go wow do you know what this is cool <laughs> i think we all forget to do that sometimes like you just forget to go take a breather in the moment and go okay that's pretty cool well done <laughs> Well, I do. I do that. You know, when I do that, I do that when I'm mastering the records, um, because when I'm making a record, I'm so into it that uh, I really am just dead focused on everything. And it's really all encompassing. And it's just a lot of really long work. And so when I'm finally 100 percent sure that I like every single second of it, yeah. then I give it one nice play and listen to it as if it were someone else's music. And really, like you said, just say, just stop and say, you know, this is really cool. This is really cool. I'm really glad I did this. And, you know, for one song, it's about four minutes of that feeling. And then, okay, let's go. Let's move on to something else. <laughs>